Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my shop. Today is June 21st and this is my weekly shop update. So I hope you had a great week. It's already Friday, which uh, another week that went by super, super fast. <laughs> so this is kind of like last week was, I guess, spending a little bit of time with family. Lindsay's maternity leave ended last week, so she's been back to work for about a week. So it was kind of like that last little bit of spending time all together all the time before that ended. So a lot of family time last week. And uh, things just kind of like getting back into the rhythm of things, getting back into a regular schedule, and now having uh, three kids waiting for me at the end of the day, <laughs> which is uh, quite nice. So I've got a few things going on this week. I was able to slab up that large uh, silver maple log. We'll take a look at that out back. I have been doing a little bit of cleaning and organizing here in the shop, and uh, the, the shop was a disaster. But I think there's a saying that goes something like, it gets worse before it gets better. And in my case, it usually gets much, much worse. And then it gets slightly better. So <laughs> I'm doing a little organizing here in the shop. I've been working on a little chainsaw rack for all my chainsaws and chainsaw stuff to hang on the wall, which is going to be nice to get the stuff all in one place and off the floor. And I've also been working on my uh, slab encapsulation epoxy project thing as well. So... Let's, uh, let's step through things, I think. Let's, uh, let's take a look at the slab thing first. So I'm working through the prep work on the slab, getting it ready for the encapsulation. So at this point, what I've done is just kind of trim it down to final size or kind of like a more rough final size. So I'm not encapsulating more material than I really need. Less epoxy, less waste, less money, <laughs> that kind of stuff. So the first thing I did after cutting it to length was to give it a full ceiling with a penetrating epoxy. The penetrating epoxy is gonna do two things. So first off, there are some kind of softer areas in the slab. So the penetrating epoxy is going to strengthen and stabilize those areas. And then the other thing it's gonna do is gonna fully seal all the wood. That way, as I'm doing any more fills on the surface using a tinted epoxy, the tint or the coloring in the epoxy is not gonna bleed out into the wood. And since I'm gonna be putting this into a full encapsulation with some tinted epoxy, that's also going to keep the color in the encapsulation epoxy out of the wood and really just preserve the actual natural wood look so that uh, you don't get any kind of weird colors mixing in. Now what's really cool about covering this whole thing in a penetrating epoxy is it's kind of like putting on a first coat of finish so you get to see all of the crazy figure and grains in the wood and this piece of wood is going to have some pretty incredible figure. So right now I'm just working through getting all of the surface imperfections filled with the brown tinted epoxy so that gives it a nice little bit of a shadow line. And then the rest of the slab will have the actual encapsulation color, which I have been working on as well. So on the last shop update, I had these little rough sample pores that I did just to kind of get an idea of what the different pigments would look like. These are all cleaned up now. They're sanded and they have one coat of finish on them. So that gives me a much better idea of what all these are going to look like. And again, I think these are still a little too... Uh, dark and opaque for me so I did pour another sample this is a little bit closer to what I think I'm going for although it is maybe a little too transparent this still needs probably like another day of curing before I can service it but I should be able to take this tape off that's a little bit better I think it's a little too transparent but it is a lot closer to the look that I'm going for I do want to be able to see down in there and be able to see the edge of the slab and I think just having a little bit of color in there just kind of makes it a little bit more on the interesting side, but this is maybe just a little too clear. So somewhere between this and this is uh, probably where I'm going to end up. So I have also been working on a quick little rack for my chainsaws, which is uh, this guy over here, which is a big piece of angle iron that I cut some slots into. I'll be able to mount to the wall and store my saws. This is not going to work like this. <laughs> but the saws can store uh, kind of vertically hanging on the wall and they're going to go right here. So I'll have my three saws just chilling on that rack. I also am drilling and tapping some holes for some studs so I can hang accessories, uh, extra bars and chains directly from this rack as well. So I am pretty pumped about this little rack. This has been something I've been meaning to do for a long time. I bought this piece of steel back in like November or October or something like that. And it's been sitting around waiting for this and I haven't wanted to do this for like years. So it's gonna be nice to finally have my saws like in an actual place and not on the floor, like just spread around all over the place. 
having it all in one place is going to be super, super nice. So I should have this thing finished up today and on the wall, and this will be a quick video that I'll put together and have out hopefully over the weekend. So look for that this, uh, this weekend. So where there was once a giant log, there are now some boards that I got to find somewhere to put. <laughs> Let's go take a look at the stack. So how's that for uh, a nice stack of slabs? <laughs> this, was, uh, this was a really fun log to uh, cut up. This log has the most amount of metal in it that I have ever dealt with. Like, a lot. There were a lot of screws, a lot of nails, and a lot of bolts in this tree throughout its life. So it was uh, kind of a fun adventure getting uh, this thing all cut up. So although a big stack of slabs like this is cool to look at, I think it's cooler if I just show you some clips from the sawmilling adventure. Ah. I mean, that's a lot of stuff. Kind of missed. Ain't nothing better than this. So that video will be out in a few weeks, probably mid-July, so look for that coming up as well. This week's Let Me Tabo something has to do with the joiner. I've got a quick question to answer about that. So this question comes from Alan over on Patreon. He asked if I go ahead and move my jointer fence back and forth as I'm doing my edge jointing to distribute wear over the full width of the cutter head. And that is something that I do not really bother doing. <laughs> so this jointer has the insert head on it. So if any particular area of it does get dull before some other area, you can always rotate those cutters and then you can have a fresh area in that once dull area. But I haven't actually found that to be an actual issue. I don't really notice that certain area is getting more dull than another one. And most of the time I have my fence all the way back that gives me most versatility so I can just come over here and joint whatever I need to. The nice thing about having a wider cutter head is that you can kind of come in at a skew angle and get a slightly cleaner cut that way too. Now the one time that I do move my fence intentionally for edge jointing is if I'm doing something really tall or heavy. So for that I'll bring the fence all the way forward. That way as I bring my piece through here I'm not awkwardly leaning over the jointer. I can apply pressure to the fence and it's just a lot more comfortable to use it that way than to be hanging way over here trying to feed a big workpiece through. So the only time I move the fence is when it's just ergonomically uh, beneficial to me. So hope that helps. So that's what I've been up to this week. Let's take a look at some viewer projects. First this week is a coat rack by David. The coat rack is made from walnut and David made this coat rack for his wife. Next the Parsons style entry table by Drew. As opposed to the table legs coming through the top, Drew opted to add three stretchers to allow the tabletop to float. The table is finished with four coats of armor seal and then hand rubbed with a scotch bright finishing pad and paste wax. And you can find more of Drew's work over on Instagram. Next this week is a tool chest by Tommy. The whole tool chest is made out of reclaimed wood that Tommy has gathered over the years. For the outside he used red oak and he used white oak for the drawers. He used guitar strap buttons for the drawer pulls and the whole case was built using dovetails. Tommy has a video over on his YouTube channel while making this chest, so definitely check it out. Tommy's a great guy. Last this week are some roll top bandsaw boxes by Drew. Drew's bandsaw box design boasts a unique roll top lid for the top compartment along with a little drawer on the bottom. Drew has a great video on his channel while making these boxes, so definitely check that out as well. Definitely head over and check out Drew's channel if you haven't already. I find him to be quite entertaining. And lastly, don't forget tomorrow if you're in the area, I will be at the Makers Meetup at uh, George Vandriska's shop that is in Hammond. That is from 1 to 7 o'clock tomorrow. I will be there, I think, the whole time. So, hope to meet a lot of you there tomorrow. So, 
I think that's about all I have for this week. Thank you, as always, for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments about anything I talked about today or anything here in my shop, please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, <laughs> happy woodworking.